Today we're going to begin Chapter 2 for Math 103. Chapter 2 is about set theory. We'll divide Chapter 2 into four main topics. We will first talk about what sets are. This will include today's video and tomorrow's video. Then we'll talk about doing things with sets. Next we'll talk about drawing sets. And then the last thing we'll do with sets are applications. So before we begin, I just want to clarify a few things. Now, understanding what sets are is pretty important because if we're going to be doing operations with them, maybe trying to add them or maybe try to multiply them, we need to first understand what sets are. Now, doing things with sets is actually a pretty natural idea in math. We do things with mathematical objects all the time. Now, you're probably used to mathematical objects consisting of numbers. So if you have numbers, we want to add numbers or subtract them, multiply, divide them. However, if you're a little bit more familiar with functions, we do the same things with functions. We can add them, subtract them, multiply, and divide them. We can even do compositions. So for us, in set theory, we first need to have the object of a set, and then we need to understand what we can do with them. Drawing sets will be more of an um, artistic topic because we'll be using Venn diagrams. And then applications to sets, this is this purpose, the purpose of applications is to show you that set theory can be used in real life. The main topic that we'll be looking at are surveys. All right, so what is a set? A set is simply a collection of objects. It is that simple. So if you see a word set in a problem and you're confused by the meaning of the problem, all you have to do is cross out that word set and put in the word collection. Probably saying the collection of apples is a little bit more meaningful than the set of apples. Now you probably can understand both contexts, however there are some problems where putting in the word collection will certainly help you figure out the problem. Here's another example. I could say the set of numbers between 0 and 5. This is describing to you the following numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4. However, I can describe the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 in another way. For instance, I could say the set of numbers that are greater than 0 and less than 5. And again, this describes the same set, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what we just saw are three ways to describe the exact same set. We could actually list out the numbers, or we can describe them in terms of words. And so you might be wondering, what is the most natural way, or is there a preferred way to describe a set? And the answer is sort of yes and no. Any way that you can describe a collection of objects is going to be sufficient, but there is a preferred way, and this is called set notation. Set notation uses the following. It uses brackets and commas. We use the brackets to denote the set, so if an element is in the set or an object is in the set, it needs to be inside of those curly brackets. And then we use commas to separate the elements. For instance, if I were to take these two sets here, I have on the left the set consisting of 12, and on the right I have the set consisting of 1 and 2. Now, it's not too hard to understand that the element in the set on the left is the number 12, while the elements, notice I'm saying plural elements, on the right are the numbers 1 and 2. Now the only reason why I know that these are different is, well, for one instance, the set on the left has one element and the set on the right has two elements, but I have a comma separating the numbers 1 and 2 on the right. Set notation, as we've just established it, is not necessarily the easiest thing to use. For instance, I could ask you to write down the set of all positive even numbers. Now, if you were just to sit there and tell me what the set of all positive even numbers are, you would probably start with 2 and then tell me 4 and 6 and keep on going in such a fashion. So the reason why using brackets and commas isn't necessarily the most ideal situation is that the list keeps on going on forever. So 
do you, do you want to write the list out forever or do you eventually want to stop? And we'll come back to that idea in a minute. But right now I want to further, further the idea of set notation. So we can extend this idea to the following. What I have here below is the set that describes the, the, the set of all positive even numbers. Now to a mathematician, this just looks like one sentence and I can look at this curly brackets and X and a bar and, and I can make sense out of that. But to you, while you're just learning about sets, this might look really strange. So here's how you can go about reading this phrase. You see those curly brackets, and when you see those, you want to associate that with this word set. The next sort of weird object in this expression is that vertical bar. So if we replace that vertical bar, I'm just going to color it in for you, that vertical bar is red so that. Now if we put this all together, what you have is you have the set of all x, or the set x, so that x is a positive and even number. And now you can see how to read this extended set notation. Many of the problems that you'll see on the homework will look like this, and it's just um, helping you establish set notation and interpreting the notation. All right, so going back to this idea of not using that set builder notation, so with the x and the bar, you could try to write down the set of all even positive numbers by just starting to list them out. And this is perfectly fine. But what you've noticed here is that I have those dot dot dots at the end. And I can use those dot dot dots at the end, which mean etc., when an established pattern has been developed. So for instance, you know that next number in the list is going to be 12. Another comment about this is that this is an infinite set. For the next video, we'll be talking about infinite sets and finite sets, but that comes later. All right, the last topic we need to talk about today is when two sets are equal. This can be a little bit confusing to some people because I could list out two sets and they might not look the same, but they are actually equal. For instance, this is a good example where putting the word collection is helpful. So we know that two collections are equal if they have the same objects or elements. For example, what we have here is we have a set that I've named A, that's what A equals and then that set is. I have a set B and then I also have a set C. Set A consists of the elements A, B, C, and D. Set B consists of the elements D, B, A, and C, while set C consists of the elements A, B, and C, D. So we can check our understanding very quickly about sets. I could say set A and B both have four elements, while set C only has two elements because I see those two elements separated by a comma. The elements in C one element is AB, and the second element is CD. If I were to ask you if any of these sets are equal, you would probably look at this and say, well, maybe A and B are equal, and they are indeed. And you might look at this and say A and B aren't equal because they're not ordered in the same way. But remember what we said before. We said that a set, two sets are equal when they have the same objects. So, when we come back over here and look at the sets A and B, all I need to ask is, do they have the same objects? Well, set A and set B both have little a, set A and B both have little b, set A and B also have little c, and they both have little d. So therefore, they are the same set. And we see that the order that the elements are listed in doesn't matter. All right, so that concludes our lecture for today. Um, please go ahead and try the homework, and then the next video, next class period, we will begin talking about elements of sets a little bit more closely.